please remember that all the session will be recorded. And if you have a, um, registered uh, via Zoom or in the forms that you write down your name and last name, make sure you're using the, your first name and the last name to be one of those rougher winners. We send the, uh, we send the gifts to the right person. If you have any technical difficulty, please uh, contact our tech support via chat in the bottom of your screen uh, to Mr. Jerkin. Also, since there is no signing sheet, an attendance report will be generated by Zoom. Once the session has ended, um, then again, it is important that for you to use your name and the last name that you submitted on your registration form when you join the Zoom session. Please remember this is a part two of Ms. Cochran uh, talk and it's run for 50 minutes and make sure you, you're already in the room, I, I believe. <laughs> if you have any question, please post them on the chat. We have a chat captain uh, that will be ready to collect your questions and comments on the chat. Of course, if there is any enough time left at the end of the Ms. Cochran's talk, she will be happy to address them. With all this being said, it is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Cochran as our speaker for the second part of her talk. Little bit background about Ms. Cochran. She is psychology professor at El Paso Community College. She served as an organization cons consultant in El Paso Juarez region for over 28 years. As a consultant, she advises local organization on topics such as change management, creativity, job analysis, and most importantly, leadership development, a topic that she has a several publication on it. Yes, she's truly leadership nerd according to herself. <laughs> she's also the founder of the Fearless Leader, the teen survivor program since 2007, where EPCC students collaborating with the middle school students to teach the strategy of uh, surviving their teen years. During her tenure at EPCC, she received several awards, such as the Outstanding Faculty Achievement Award, the NISAD Excellent Award in 2015, both of them, and also Mini Stephen Piper Professor Award in 2018. She is also board member and active volunteer for Siwada Nuova, a local nonprofit organization dedicated to servicing uh, the Rio Grande community near El Paso, downtown of El Paso. In response to pandemic, she developed the community coaching program for the members of our community, which leads on the weekly basis, and always she is saying that volunteers are welcome. And if you want to join her uh, community service, please contact her uh, via her email or the office um, number. It is inspiring to see the community members support one another in this difficult time with ideas, solution, and prayers. This is what she believes also. She born and, and raised in El Paso. Uh, in the beautiful Sun City, and she loves everything in it, such as people, mountains, puppies, the bike trails, and the, of course, panaderias, the Mexican bakeries. She and her husband, Joe, of 34 years, are proud to call El Paso their home and the place that they, they raise their kids. Today, she hopes to share her observation, hard lesson learned, and best tips for changing one's perspective. Thank you for joining us this morning. And let's start it with Power of Perspective, part two with Ms. Cochran. Ms. Cochran, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ansari. Uh, uh, and welcome back, everyone. I am so glad that you're back to uh, really, you know, let's put this into practice, right? Let's, let's get this going. So um, for part two, uh, I hope, you know, and maybe you've seen all the pictures. Of, these are my family, my kids, and kids that don't even belong to me. Um, but, you know, when we're 
taking something and making new things familiar and also making familiar things new. And the, the, the power of, you know, something that possibly we have visited several times. Um, we've taught it over and over and it can become very familiar like an old shoe. But I, I do hope that we can revisit it again with new eyes. So um, Adam Merkel, uh, he's the CEO of New Peaks and the author of a book called Pivot, The Art and Science of Reinventing Your Career in Life. And these are some tips that he gives about learning to pivot. And so what is the lens that uh, you see the world through? Right. And, uh, you know, how how do we see our discipline? How do we view uh, uh, the topics and are there certain topics that maybe we don't like and maybe we convey that to our students. Um, this is all part of revisiting with a with new eyes, new wonder, right? And, and we do have to wander into the wonder of our discipline and our world. And also, again, like we talked about in the earlier session, like how do other disciplines do it? How do other grade levels do it? Uh, when it comes to creativity, which I am going to be asking of you today, um, sometimes we think that it's the big C stuff, these like life changing, you know, proportional dimension kind of stuff. But scholars in creativity research distinguish between big C and little C and mini C. And so, uh, you know, if we can start looking at it as little things that we could do differently or, you know, a new, a new uh, handout that we could give or a new activity for a certain uh, lesson, um, those, can, those little C's, by the way, the more you practice them, the more they make uh, the possibility of a big C uh, come through. So, you know, keep that open mind. And then of course you're familiar with Bloom's taxonomy. I'm not gonna take you through all the details, but I would hope that while we're doing this activity today, that we're all striving to, whether it's for our classrooms or as a Dean, maybe it's for your staff, your employees, um, but that what you're doing when you group up, that is um, activities that are gonna help people analyze and evaluate and create, right? We're always so proud when we've created something right? And we take that with us. It really does change us. And, you know, I would ask that when you're looking at the activities, the assignments that you have in your classrooms, the um, things that you do for team building in your offices, that you would, um, you know, consider the following. Like if an employer was meeting your student, right, how do they stand out, right? What product did they create? Right? What do they have to show for having taken your class? And I'm going to brag a little here. I just got this. It was like so timely, right? I got this note um, through uh, Facebook. I, I got this a couple of um, months ago from a student. And she said, hi, just wanted to say how much I appreciate you as a professor. She says, I took your class in 2013. You truly empowered me as a professional in ways I cannot explain. I constantly use skills that I learned in your class. It's helped me navigate the business world very confidently. And then she states, my career portfolio and book from your class stay on my desk 24 seven so I can reach it quickly, LOL. I've used it to help so many people with their own resumes. And she says, your knowledge has rippled into lives everywhere and thank you for being so awesome. But I, I love that, you know, she sent this and we've had some more communications about like the different jobs. She's thriving in Seattle. But the thing that I, I think really was um, transformative for her was she made something in that class. She took it and she calls it her career portfolio. Um, and, you know, it stayed with her and she's used it to teach others. And, you know, that's the value of what we should um, be doing in our classrooms. So, okay, guys, we're going to do some mental warm up. Okay, so time to uh, grab your pen and paper or whatever you have, right? And we're going to do some stretching. Ready? Okay, you're going to stretch it out, right? And ready? Okay, this is going to be a mental exercise, right? Just to get you ready. This isn't the breakout groups yet. This is as an individual. Okay, we're going to do a couple of these on our own, and then we're going to come together as a group and see what we can produce in our groups. All right, ready, everybody? I'm going to time you. Okay, we get, uh, okay, it's coming, it's coming. Let me see, I'm trying to set my timer here so it'll work. There we go. All right, okay, so here goes the first one. This is a think fast, okay? So you're going to be asked to list 
all the things that the following picture could possibly be. Right? All the things that the following picture could possibly be. Ready? Go. Okay, time is up. All right, let's hear on the chat. Uh, let's hear on the chat. Um, if you can give me uh, one of the things that you wrote that you think is probably very unique, maybe something you came up with that you don't think maybe too many people uh, came up with. If you can put that on the chat. And oops. Sorry, I'm having trouble here looking at the chat. I don't know why it keeps happening. <laughs> I can't see your answers on the chat. Let's see. Oh, okay, maybe that would help. Uh, there we go, chat. There it is. All right, let's see. No. Oh, there it is. There it was. Oh, no, I stopped sharing. Ah. Right, and there it is. Okay, all right, it's either one or the other for me. It's not happening uh, for whatever reason. Chat, there. Okay, oh, all right. So um, we have eyes with lashes, cars, wheels, paws, man with hat and four eyes, right? Okay, um, I'm seeing Turtles walking, bugs, tanks, right? Ladybugs <laughs> on rocks at that, a bus, right? Okay, mountains with watering holes, people under an umbrella. Wow, these answers are amazing. Okay, and, and the reason why I'm sharing your answers with one another, it's, and you know, sometimes we hold back from being creative because we're scared of judgment. Right and hamburgers, <laughs> I see hamburgers here, and you know, in when it comes to really being creative, we just have to let go, right? We have to stop worrying about judgment. And these are amazing answers, and I also wanted to share them because I wanted to show you how simple it is to change our perspective. Like when you saw um, Christian Sala saying, hey, it's people under an umbrella, that probably made you say, oh, wow, I hadn't thought about it from that direction, or I hadn't looked at it as, you know, ladybugs or a boss, it could have been a vehicle. And so we learn from one another's perspectives. And that's what's so amazingly powerful is that you can see things from different angles, man, this could have been pause now pause those of you who wrote pause that's a very unique answer i've only seen that one throughout the years maybe i could count the number of times on one hand and you know realizing hey these could have been elephant paws or these could have been pet paws or whatever um that you know can alter future perspective for everyone so keeping in mind that we learn from one another, it's not one of those talents that you're born with and that you have to, you know, uh, cross your fingers that you got it or you didn't, right? Okay, and so, all right, we're gonna do one more, right? And then we're gonna break out into our breakout groups. So we're ready, here we go, okay, keep it moving. All right, the next one again, you get 30 seconds for it. Let me set up my... Um, alarm here, right? Okay, and it's a think fast, right? And again, now considering all the new perspectives and angles that you saw from others, now let's see what you think this one could be. Go.
Hey, that's your sign to stop. All right, let's hear on the chat. Let's see what you came up with for this one. <laughs> okay, I got boats on a pier and lady with curls. I love it. Lolly, a juggler, trees, ice cream, a magic wand. Wow, they're so fast. A birthday candle. Oh, I love that one. These are awesome. These are awesome. These are amazing. Flying chair ride. Ooh, look at that. Right? A windmill. Uh, a, may a fly swatter. Definitely. Definitely could be a fly swatter. Wow, you see how creative you are? Wow, this is, this is just wonderful, right? And, and you know, we have to kind of get there. Uh, we have to put ourselves in the right mindset, right? When we're wanting to be creative and also when we're wanting our students to be creative. And you know, there's things that can definitely hurt our creativity, like time pressure, unfortunately, sorry. Imagine how much, and sometimes you know, it can actually make you better, but um, uh, time pressure can hurt us if, we're, if it's something that's got really high stakes, right? Um, and amazing, a microphone, a, a bubble wand, right? Amazing, I loved, I love, love your answers. All right, folks, well, um, real quickly, I just have like two more slides and then we're breaking up, I think, into uh, the breakout groups here, right? Okay, so amazing results. Thank you for sharing those uh, with us. And, uh, you know, if you didn't come up with too many answers or if you had trouble with it, you know, don't get discouraged because like I said, it's definitely a skill that we have to develop. We have to practice it, right? So, all right, so this is going to be the first thing you're going to do um, before the breakouts. I am asking that we take, and I'm going to cut this down to two minutes because we are on a really tight time crunch today. Um, and we are going to do this for two minutes. So for two minutes on your paper there that you have, or you can do it on your laptop or your tablet or whatever, uh, you can put, uh, identify one of the most challenging concepts right, that maybe you teach in the classroom or that you're dealing with at work or in life in general. And I want you to kind of go through a, a who, what, where, why kind of thing. So why is it challenging, right? And what evidence do you have, right? Okay, that it's an issue. Uh, and how do you usually approach it? You know, what have you done in the past? And does it work? Has it worked? And could it be better? Right, okay, and so go ahead and do this. Let's give you two minutes. Now this one's still on your own because you're gonna take what you do here and then you're gonna go into the breakout groups with it. Okay, so go ahead, um, the clock starts now.
All right, and time is up. Okay, so you're gonna take what you've done, uh, your notes that you have and, and having that idea in the forefront, and we're gonna go ahead and break you up into the breakout groups. Uh, this is what you will be doing. Right, and so you'll be sharing your topic briefly with your group. Now we are in a really tight time crunch. I just wish we were in person and we could actually, you know, team up on tables and it would be so awesome, but we'll make the best of it, right? Uh, and your mission is to create a new activity for this concept that you, you taught, uh, thought about in step one that will build perspective, uh, will be engaging, will build memories, and back to all the things we've covered today. So think preschool, think play, think supplies. If you pulled out any supplies, if you found your Play-Doh or whatever, you know, bring them out and see what could you do. Um, how can you borrow from other disciplines? How could you, could you make a game? Gaming is so amazing in the classroom. Uh, is there a role play you could think for things that aren't traditionally role play? Right? And could there be a class performance or poetry, et cetera? And you know, take notes on what you're um, uh, producing in this session and, and don't be judgy. That, this is not the time to judge. This is the time to brainstorm. Okay, so let's go ahead and get in our breakout groups and this is going to be fun. Let's see how I think it's letting me. Okay, hold on. Um, I might have to stop share briefly. Okay, groups, I have the group. I have all of that. Oh, yes, breakout rooms. All right, assign automatically. All right, we have 60 people and we don't want more than five people in each group. So the math, <laughs> quickly, six day, that's 10, uh, 12, right? Okay, so we're gonna create 12 breakout groups. And there we go. Okay, it's gonna assign you automatically. Right, and here we go. All right, all rooms are open. And so you should be able to join that room um, and enter that room. I see the room, there they are, you're going in. Okay, all right, go ahead and enter your room and remember what you're out to do, right? Mission, right? Okay, and it's not mission impossible. Mission absolutely possible, right? Okay. There you go, into your sessions. And I'll pop in and out of different sessions um, as, as time permits, right? And we've got 10 minutes for this, right? So there you go. And the clock starts now. Actually, I'm gonna give you just a couple more minutes to get in there. All right, you can start.
All right, welcome back everyone. Um, I hope those sessions were, I know they're really short and we just were on a time crunch, but I wanted to uh, hear, you can tell us on the chat um, if some things, some amazing creations occurred in the last 10 minutes, because sometimes when we're under a time crunch, we get more creative, right? And so uh, was there anything that kind of came out of it where you're like, wow, I could really use that in my classroom or in my uh, team uh, building or et cetera. So if you can put that on the chat, that would be great. Anything? <laughs> Did anything come out of the sessions? Our spelling. Someone said spelling. Yes. Okay. We got to do spelling. What was what was the prompt? What did you want us to do? Um, what came out of those sessions? And and was were you able to create um, either an idea, foundation? Because it's all about a seed, right? Getting the seed started uh, for um, new opportunities to uh, have new ideas in your classroom, new activities, new games, etc. So Melissa is saying word puzzles to help with dyslexia, Jeopardy definitely to help with public speaking. Right. And students love those games, right? Okay, they love Kahoot. Um, but, you know, the other part of gaming, and I've been using gaming for a while in the classroom, um, and is that as they create games, you know, if they can resort to something that's minimal effort, then it's not going to be as memorable for them. So encouraging them to be creative when they're making games and to, you know, make human game pieces or, you know, and actually use their team members in the classroom as, you know, game parts and, um, or use clay and make models, et cetera. So the more senses they involve, uh, the more effective it will be. Yeah, somebody wrote, uh, Brack wrote, uh, low stake drawing and writing games, definitely. Bring your favorite hat, Eden says, or your PJs, right? Live student hours, those are awesome. Those are awesome. So I'm glad, I'm glad you got to talk about some of these challenges. It, it can be challenging to especially come back, you know, with fresh eyes at a topic that you've seen over and over again, right? Um, and a uh, nice idea, Fariba and Sari says, Edith had a nice idea for the teens instead of arguing, ask them, why do you want to do this? Uh, start with negotiation. I think this is a valid point that our students don't want to do their work. Uh, can't do everything. So what matters most? Exactly. Right. OK. Yeah. What matters most? Awesome. All right. Um, great. Great. It looks like at, there was some value. Right. I wish it was longer. We probably could have used a whole hour for this section right here um, because, you know, uh, creativity does take some time and we feed off each other. Right. Or two, Ruben says, or two hours. Yeah, yeah. That's why I proposed a two-part session. You can see now why, right? Um, all right, you all. Well, I, I'm glad something good came out of it for you. And, you know, if you're wanting to explore this a little more, um, by all means, I'm always open to uh, chatting with you. We can Zoom. We can collaborate together. Um, I tend to, uh, you know, let my brain go and it starts just coming up with all kinds of ideas for how we can approach things that's happened to me. I think a lot through Teen Survivor, because when we have to take a challenging topic and we take it to middle schoolers, we have to be really engaging and we have to be really creative on how we're going to get them to learn and how it's going to stick, right? Okay, how to get them, get it to stick. So, um, all right, everybody. Well, let's finish up here. Um, I'm so glad to have you sharing your results. And even though it wasn't a, as much detail as you'd like or as much time to develop, at least it plants the seed, right? The seed to wander and the seed to wonder, right? And so I'm just gonna kind of finish up our story now with um, our family has, like I said, visited Zion many times. And a few years later, uh, we went back to Zion, but this time we went to a trail called Observation Point. Now this is uh, this is a very treacherous trail. Uh, it's about an eight mile round trip trail. It takes about six hours to do. And it was tough. It was a toughie, but we did it, right? Okay. And 
something interesting about this trail. Well, first of all, it was hard. It wasn't easy. Uh, we actually had an older couple, probably in their late 60s, pass us up and tell us, like, it's good. Keep going, guys. You can do it, right? <laughs> we're like, okay. If they can make it, we can make it. So, you know, once we're at the top, though, I want to show you the view that you get to see from observation point. And now, does anybody recognize anything? This is the view from observation point. Do you see anything here that might stand out to you? Exactly, Lore. The other trail. Look at the size of Angel's Landing. This is Angel's Landing. This is that ominous trail that took me multiple times to finally accomplish. And, you know, with this new trail that we had just completed, it made that previous obstacle, it kind of made it look puny, right? <laughs> it was like, wow, right? There I was worrying about that. And <laughs> little did I know, right? Okay, that this was waiting around the corner for me, right? And so um, when we look at, you know, our, our life challenges and our obstacles that we're able to overcome, it can dwarf our past limitations and stretch our perspective. And I think that's what's so important for our students. Imagine the value of stretching themselves. And, you know, we know that once the human mind is stretched by a new idea, that it never returns to its original dimensions. And, um, you know, when we when we push them, when we empower them. And this is just to sum up what we said today, you know, emphasizing they are in control of their lives, right? They're not a dandelion at the mercy of the wind. They're in control and it's their choice how they view the world. Uh, and if they choose to see it in a positive light, they'll live longer. <laughs> um, their traits, their so-called traits can be developed. It's not about being born with a talent. It's about developing intelligence developing those talents and you know choosing to uh, practice the life-saving habit of optimism um, you know that they have an ability to grow and to change and to wander and analyze and I love this quote if we were meant to stay in one place we'd have roots instead of feet right and um, as for our wanderings um, I definitely think my family my husband and I planted the seed for our kids that's my daughter in Korea that's her getting her master's um, in uh, geophysics uh, geoscience and that's her proposal to be engaged married this year um, as for my son he got his master's enrolled in a PhD his wife now right was a friend back on one of those pictures that you saw and that's part of the transformative power of seeing these beautiful things right they've continued to travel uh, they've gone to Norway and Iceland and then came this little guy our bundle of joy right we're grandparents now and let me see if you can guess what they named him any guesses in the chat? Any guesses? <laughs> ah, you got it. You got it, Yvette, right? Okay, yeah, this is, uh, this is baby Zion, right? And so <laughs> we've got plans for you, child. We've got many, many plans for you, right? And, um, uh, I'm just so grateful that you could join me here this morning and just remember that not all who wander are lost. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Calabia, again for lovely and very informative presentation. I am sure the other people, uh, they are excited just like myself to go and take one class with you. <laughs> Come on over and I'll take you guys if you ever want to go hiking you're more than welcome biking now that's we just picked up mountain biking and uh, and that one has given us new eyes for all the national parks that we have to revisit because <laughs> now we have to ride the trails. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so so much. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Please make sure you're clicking on the next um, link for our keynote speech.